good night, everybody. Um, we're the parking group. Um, our group is composed by Nicole Martino, Adam Siegel, and Nestor Polanco. Um, both Nicole and myself are part of the IGERT program um, that Professor Paso introduced before, and Adam is um, finishing his master's in public administration. So we are looking more specifically about the parking structure and the commuter, uh, number of commuter spaces, uh, parking spaces that are actually in the uh, in the Quincy Center station. So we, as it was mentioned, um, the Quincy Center station was closed in the summer, um, and the MBTA uh, wanted ideas uh, to what to do about this number. Should we put more or less, or we should we keep it the same? Uh, so we, as a group, we created this company, NIN Innovative Parking Solutions, and we tried to present three alternatives to trying to answer this, uh, this case. Uh, this problem. So this is a brief outline of our presentation. We're going to talk about a little bit of uh, project statement. Um, briefly, we're going to talk about our visions and goals of uh, our project. Uh, we're going to discuss a little bit about the methodology that we went through since the beginning until this point to the presentation. Um, we're going to point out a, a, few, a few facts about Quincy Center and point out some highlights of the data analysis that we did for making our recommendations. And finally, we're gonna talk about the purpose of being here is the alternatives and choosing one alternative, saying why we chose that alternative and discuss some general recommendations for the project. So for the project statement, um, our group or ANN um, took the initiative of creating three alternatives uh, that it was trying to answer the question for the MBTA uh, to see how many parking spaces should be put out for commuters and what is going to be the, uh, the impact of this decision both to the MBTA and the new real development. Um, the MBTA is our client for, for this project. <coughs> so for the vision, goals, and objectives, um, we, by doing our uh, a little bit of history search, we saw that Quincy, or Quincy as a city has evolved and has adapted very well to changes in economy. So we saw as a group that we envisioned the new Quincy Center that the MBTA and the Quincy, city of Quincy needs also to adapt to new demands in transportation. So we see the new Quincy Center station as a multimodal hub uh, station for the need, that the new redevelopment of downtown needs and also the uh, MBTA also needs. So briefly, the three alternatives are, we're looking at um, an incremental uh, scenario, so alternatives. We are gonna propose, uh, we're gonna analyze what, what will happen if there is no parking, what will happen if we do a less than one to one, 862 parking spaces, or what will happen if we put even more parking spaces that are currently in the location. So a little bit about the methodology, we tried, um, to understand who is the station serving to and who is gonna use the station. Um, also, we try to understand, well, we will look into understanding the, the TLD redevelopment project of three, the street works that is right next to the station. Um, we did a literature review of TLD projects that are similar to Quincy Center to learn from their experiences, learn from their, their mistakes and successes and see if we can actually apply, if it is applicable to the situation that the Quincy Center Station is going through. And also, we did an extensive uh, data analysis of trying to understand mm -hmm. what have been the trends of ridership and what is the parking usage, both into the downtown Quincy, the Quincy Center Station, and its neighboring stations uh, around al along the red line, um, Walston's and Quincy Adams. And um, finally, we, by going, analyzing all the this, uh, before, um, we came up with three alternatives that we tried to merge them all as a multimodal hub. Uh, all the three alternatives are trying to build a multimodal hub station. So now I will pass uh, the time to the talk to Nicole so she can talk about the facts of Quincy. Okay, so here are just some facts that um, I'm going to go over before we present the alternatives. So the MBTA uh, is a stop on the red line subway system. Um, it has multiple stops on the commuter rail and about 15 bus lines. It opened in 1971 as the final stop on the red line, um, and at that time, an 872-space parking
parking garage was built. In 1983, the red line was expanded to have its last stop as uh, Braintree, which is what it is today. Um, the parking garage that was built um, was closed this July, July 2012. Directly before its closure, it was utilized about 70% of the time during peak hours, and it was uh, $5 a day to park there. So due to the expansion of the red line and the decline in the economy, the Quincy Center Station garage was not utilized to its capacity during peak hours. However, it was utilized 70% of the time. So this shows that there was some parking demand, but just not as much as when it was built in 1971. So here's some uh, ridership data analysis that we did. Uh, we did it for three stations, Quincy Adams, Wallison, and Quincy Center. And Quincy Adams and Wallison, as you probably know, are on either end of Quincy Center. Um, so some things you can take away from this are that the Quincy Center Station has had an increase of about 2,000 riders since 2007 to this year, 2012. Um, but in contrast, Wallston and Quincy Adams have, you know, they fluctuated, but they basically stayed the same. Um, so you can see that the Quincy Center Station is more <laughs> utilized than its surrounding stations, or it's been increased more. Um, and if the numbers continue to increase, this could indicate that maybe some parking um, would be advantageous at this site. So for our parking data analysis, we did um, an analysis again at the two surrounding stations, Quincy Adams and Wallston, and we also did a parking analysis of the downtown Quincy area. So Quincy Center, um, that 70% utilized is di from directly before it was closed. The Quincy Adams and Wallston uh, utilization value, 73% and the 99% are current. And the downtown Quincy analysis uh, the latest analysis we could get our hands on was from 2005, so that's what those numbers are from. So you can see that while the garage was open, there was some availability, but there was also some demand. Um, for Quincy Adams, the current there is currently some space available in Wallston. It's basically full. Um, there's not you probably can't get a space during peak hours. Um, and for downtown Quincy, during 2005, there was some availability. Uh, in the downtown area with the garage open. But for the 500 people who used to park there, they've obviously been displaced to other locations, one probably being downtown Quincy. So since the, the closing of the garage, um, that utilization has probably gone up in downtown Quincy. Also, one thing um, to note is that probably since the garage has closed, there's been um, you know, to, the ability to uh, accommodate visitors has probably decreased, so maybe some visitation has, has decreased since then. But since we don't have the parking <coughs> values um, after 2005, um, we feel that the parking data analysis is probably a little bit incomplete, and one of our recommendations would be to get a more up-to-date um, parking analysis for downtown Quincy. So again, our alternatives, we have three, no parking, less than one-to-one, -one, so less than 872 parking spaces, and more than one-to-one, -one, or more than 872 parking spaces. But all of these alternatives will, uh, will strive on the idea of making Quincy Center Station a multimodal hub. So just to go into some themes that you're gonna see in all of these alternatives, um, all of these themes combine together in each alternative in different ways to promote the multimodal environment. So bike, pedestrian, busing, and vehicles. So these themes are signage, safety, accessibility, bicycles, pedestrians, buses, appearance, Pricing and the amount of parking shared and shared parking. And the idea is to draw OE users that are single drivers and not develop the station as another park and ride. Um, some of the themes have the same components in each of the alternatives, and some appear more predominantly or more intensely in certain alternatives, and I think you'll see that. So each theme is pretty much unique for each alternative. And the alternatives are presented by highlighting five of the most important and most significant uh, recommendations for each. And Adam will discuss them. So our first alternative is, is obviously our most radical alternative, but it's also the least expensive. Mm -hmm. So by putting, by taking the garage down and not putting a new one up, we're not spending as much money as we would if we had to build a new, a new garage. Um, some important things about this alternative is you have the Adams Green project right next to the station. And this, this alternative, you're not going to have a big garage there, so the Adams Green is kind of going to flow right into the station. So wayfinding tools and signage are going to be very important for this alternative. You want people to have as easy a commute as, as they can. You want them to be able to get to the station and make a transition from pedestrian or from a bicycle or from a bus and get onto a train without having to, to take really a lot of time to find out where they're going. Also with this alternative, biking is going to be important because you're not going to have more vehicles. Um, 
we want to incorporate some sort of bike lanes in downtown Quincy, and we also would like to see either bike cages or covered bike racks at the station to, so people have an ease of, of putting their bikes away and they don't have to worry about their belongings. Um, we also want to look at expanding bus routes or having some sort of shuttle bus service in the downtown area. You're not going to have as many cars and you still want to bring people to the station and to the downtown area. We believe that expanding the bus routes is going to help with that. And then finally, <coughs> with this great green space next door, you want to make sure that this, this project, that this alternative is what is used, is historically accurate and it's also going to be accurate to look like the rest of the redevelopment project so people are, it's aesthetically pleasing and they want to come there. Our next alternative is a less than one to one. So the MBTA is our client and they expressed an interest that if a garage was built, they're gonna want at least a 500 parking space garage. That was just the number they came up with and that's what we had to work with. So with that garage, there's a few things that would happen that we, we wanna accent in this alternative. The first would be shared parking. So we have this 500 space garage and we want it to be utilized 24 seven a day to maximize, maximize profit. So we want commuters in there during the day, and then in the evenings and overnights, we want residents and visitors to the area so that the businesses have a place for people to park. We also want to expand the bus routes in this scenario out west. If you can see that picture there, the red lines are most difficult. Those are the bus routes to Quincy Center. Most are generally north and south, with a few to the east. <coughs> the bus routes west are generally not, they're not, uh, they're not there. So we'd like to, to have the MBTA look into putting some routes out west to bring more people to the station and more people to this new downtown redevelopment. We also want to incorporate bikes into this scenario as well. Uh, the MBTA has about $5 million in a couple of bicycle programs that they have right now, and that's all the money to be used for, setting up bike cages or bike racks and things of that nature at stations. There are 12 stations that the MBTA is currently looking at to put some of these initiatives in. Quincy Center is not one of them. And we'd like to, to make them, make Quincy Center one of them, and we can use this garage to incorporate the bike cages. Finally, a 500 space garage is less than what was there before, and in the future, if we find that we need more parking at the site, Quincy Adams is the next station down the line, and there, that station is direct route to the Southern Expressway, so they have the land and they have the ability to build a bigger parking structure there, so we believe that a smaller garage here is beneficial and if the parking becomes an issue later on, you could build a bigger station, uh, build a bigger garage down at the next station. Our last alternative is more than one-to-one. -one. And in this alternative, it's about maximizing access to parking and MBTA revenue. So the people who used to park at Quincy Center are probably not coming back once this garage, they've already found other, other ways of getting to the transit line. So this alternative is more for a new initiative, either private or municipal, that you want to build on the site. So <coughs> some of the ideas that the Vision Group had, this is the kind of garage that you'd want in place for maybe those micro apartments or something of that nature. In addition to the less than one to one, we're, we're going to want the shared parking initiative in this one. But we also want to further expand that to a monthly parking permit program for the, the residents of Quincy so we get some cars off the streets at night and people feel more secure parking in a larger garage. Um, we'd like to have some sort of initiative with Zipcar where we have the space in this garage to rent space to Zipcar so that this, the residents of Quincy have something to, they, they have another option for a shared vehicle initiative and that's we think would work with this size garage. And then finally, um, the city of Quincy is trying to make this downtown area more pedestrian friendly and with a large garage we think we could still do that by putting the entrances and exits on Bergen Parkway which is on the opposite side of where most of the redevelopment is going on. And we also want to look at building pedestrian walkways over these Hancock Street and Bergen Parkway to make sure that pedestrians can get to the station without having to deal with traffic. The alternative that we recommended is going to be the less than one-to-one, -one, the 500 space garage. And this was based on a couple of reasons. Quincy Center, from the data that we analyzed, was only really used the garage 70% capacity at its peak hours, so it was never fully utilized. Um, ridership has increased at the station by about 2,000 people on an average weekday from 2007, so we do feel that we need some sort of parking there. Um, the, the 2005 parking study that we were able to come up with, uh, it put about downtown capacity at 73%, if you remember that number, but that included the garage 
when it was opened. So since that garage is closed, we, the capacity for parking in downtown has diminished. And we think that we still need a structure there to, to bring the capacity back up. And then finally, this alternative gives, what, gives the MBTA what they want, which is the 500 spaces, and it also gives the city of Quincy what they want, which is to keep the area pedestrian friendly and to really make a multimodal hub out of the station. Finally, our general recommendations. We need to stress that a more extensive parking study needs to be done in the area. Um, and, someone, and the city or the, or the MBTA needs to commission such a study to be done because really none of these alternatives can intelligently be selected without that sort of study. We as a group just didn't have the resources to do that and we really stressed to the client that it needed to be done before anything could really be picked. And that's, that's our presentation. Thank you all for listening.